We're live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, Andra, do you want to start us off and give us a little... Of course. Okay, so hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. You probably know that I'm the social media coordinator at Agora Gallery. I'm here today with a small part of our uh, Agora family, Belle, Katia and Nick. And of course, um, Sabrina, who is our director of uh, marketing and PR, and our guest of honor, Angela Di Bello, our former gallery director. In this series of videos, we want to show to see our artist studios, discuss a bit their technique, and answer a few questions. So let's get started. Sabrina, over to you. Hi, everyone, again. Hi. Uh, Hi. We're so, so excited to have you all here. This is. Um, really special. It's our first session that we're kicking off in, in hopefully an, an ongoing series of studio visits. We are basing this off of uh, Agora Galleries, one of our founding concepts, which is based on the word the Agora, which is the ancient word for meeting place where people came to exchange ideas. And so we're hoping to create a virtual space here today where we can connect with each other learn more about your work, your practices, what inspires you. Andra already introduced Angela, who's joining us with her over 35 years of expertise. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she is our that, former that, executive that, director. That makes me sound ancient. <laughs> <laughs> so we're super excited mm. and um, we're hoping to just continue the dialogue, have a conversation about your work, um, and go from there. So, Belle, if you'd like to start and give us your tour, that would be super. Hi, I'm Belle Roth, and welcome to my studio. So, Hi, Belle. I'm a, thank you. I'm a contemporary artist, and I'm based here in Memphis. And um, I'm currently collaborating with the Accora team right now in preparation for my gallery opening in Art Expo New York. But more importantly, there's a lot of synergy going on because we would like to bring in new pieces for Red Dot Miami, a couple of international um, uh, exhibits and more gallery openings for 2021 and beyond. But um, when, you th when you think of Bell Roth, actually think of time, um, texture, depth, and a lot of partnership with Agora experts as I'm building it through the process. So if I may, I would like to lead you to my gallery and the story behind uh, every Bell Rock art. So what is behind me right now is the new series that I'm working on. But what you don't see here is really the process. So starting from a clean slate, a canvas is a clean canvas. That's where I put my emotion in. I put like something that inspires me, uh, whether it's a face or a picture or a memory from a, a location that I'm involved with or the culture that I've witnessed. From there, I build texture over time by using or infusing different colors and acrylic paints. Um, time seems essential for me because that's where the depth comes in. So there's a lot of medium depending on which is appropriate or where I feel. So I put molding paste, it could be a gold leaf, a silver leaf, a charcoal, and now I'm beginning to learn how to use sand and resin, which is really exciting as we go to 2021 and beyond. So um, on, after I finish and get the emotion, and this for this um, series, it's really a monochrome tone for me. Every painting, you will see a bell walk signature, which is a splishy splash. Doesn't make sense, but it's my mark. And for me, it's a reminder that imperfection is okay. I've traveled extensively, and for me, it doesn't really matter where you are, but what you do to where you are. And I see a lot of imperfection, and it just reminds me of that process. I have two sections in my studio. I have the working section, and then I have the staging. And for the next two minutes, I'll just go walk you through how it looks like. So my day starts at five in the morning. And I usually have coffee, this is where I sit. You can see I'm working right now. And then this is my working station. You can see a lot of pieces that are moving here. Those are the resin pieces that I'm building. I don't know what it will look like. And I need emotions and inspiration eventually. But once the, the paintings, and you can see a lot of series, once it's done, it will stay here for a couple of weeks, maybe two, three, four weeks until everything is dry. You can see a lot of these paintings are drying. 
And I know the Agora experts, they want quality pictures in everything that I sent to them when they select for the show. So we do have a staging outside for the official photography, but inside I have a setup here that I can do from my own as I talk to them in seven pieces. I do have a small seating area here. This is where I do a lot of my social media marketing and I tag Nick, I say hello to you from here. So this is where I sit. But at the end of the day, it's really, what I want to do is really learn more, engage more, collaborate more. That's where I read a lot of the social media posts that Andra will um, post there every day and then go to the Facebook chat room and see what other artists like Nick and Katya are doing. So that's a day in the life from five o'clock and I go back here and then back to you, Andra. That's interesting. Super. Yeah, that's really exciting. Good to see the work is so vibrant. Um, lots of colors, lots of textures. Um, I think that she's staying very positive in her colors. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I know that you use you you typically use a lot of black and gold, which has its own meaning, right, yeah. behind its work. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit, or and 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 tell us how you how you've evolved from that into the the more colorful works and how they play off of each other. Good point. I grew up in the Philippines where I see a separation in terms of the culture and the social economic standing. So people are fortunate and some are not. So there's really a strong separation. So the black stands out for, I would say, lack of a better word, less fortunate and the hardship and the gold start for the good times. But you can see it blended at some point. And that's where the squishy splash comes in and how I mold it. Because here, now that I'm in the U.S., I know that there's no separation and I feel it. And it's all about equality. And that's where I stand. I want equality. And as I bridge into the new pieces, you can see that all the golds and the blacks are now molding. Every day I'm evolving. And that's where the evolving comes in because now I'm getting more exposed to the US, more positive, a lot of light, a lot of color. So, but uh, my foundation is the same. It's fun to see that progression. I mean, the color, I, both of all the works behind you, I, they speak to each other in a really nice way. Nice. Thank you. Great. Super. Well, thank you so much for that. And we'll come back. Um, but let's move on. Katya, do yeah, you want to give us your tour? Um, I will get the laptop. As you see, I think you see it there. Eh? The outside uh, area is very calming. So when I start, I always try to focus on, let's say, the environment, the birds, to kind of calm, calm down and to really feel a good uh, emotion, feeling and thought. And then I start to paint. And what I'm doing now is making heads. I hope you can see it. Mm -hmm. And I start with uh, white, always with white. And then with other colors, I'm going to add forms. And I don't know exactly, um, it's just intuitive. I start and then the forms come to me. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I like that, I use this. It's paint and I can put nice lines. So then you get this. That's very interesting because what you're doing basically is design uh, is um, is actually outlining your form with a dark color. Is that correct? Yeah. So you're using the brighter colors first, and then you're outlining your um, your your form comes about afterwards. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Because yeah. for me, it's about uh, the painting. Uh, becoming conscious and right. that you yourself really want to become uh, conscious and give a good uh, vibe away but you're going through uh, emotions right well it's very yeah. interesting the so, whole idea is really interesting yeah so you have that you you have that feeling in yourself sometimes that's a little bit dense and then you really feel the higher vibes right. but it's all in the painting and in the end, I wonder, uh, how do you say that? That it's happy and vibrant. 
definition comes through yeah. in the end. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There we well, go. And this one is called uh, Human Touch because now with the social distance thing is a kind of yes. weird, huh? So that's uh, mm. kind of the theme. Mm. And if I can take you to the other room, I have here my office where I usually use my laptop. And here are also some paintings. And you also mm -hmm. see that it's not, yeah, it's kind of calm, but also very bright. And it's mm. also not totally perfect, but I love that it's kind of the heart shape. Mm. It's called the Compassion Society. Mm. Yeah. A lot of compassion is needed now in this particular so. time more than ever, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that's actually uh, kind of it. Well, I, I, I love, as I'm sure we all do, the fact that you are uh, thinking about uh, the physical distancing uh, part of where we are today and um, really taking that into consideration as you create your work. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I think, uh, in my perspective, we all need it to absolutely each other and uh, embrace each other. Uh, absolutely. For themselves, but also for the other. Yes, yeah. that's right. We have to come together somehow and yeah. not forget that we are uh, human yeah. and compassionate and need to reach out to each other in spite of the fact that we are physically separated. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, yeah. what it's about now. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Nick, do you want to give us your tour? Sure. Um, I am Nick Batista. Um, I just uh, joined Agora Gallery in February, so I'm fairly new. Uh, but I'm also extremely excited uh, to work with you all um, and the gallery. So thank you very much. Uh, so I have uh, a work in progress behind me, which I'll show you uh, in a little bit when I do a quick little tour. Um, a lot of my paintings, uh, I should say the majority of my paintings, um, the aesthetic and the visuals are derived uh, from my drawings. Uh, I write and I draw and I journal every single day. It's, uh, it's a practice that I've kept up for years, um, high school all the way through art school graduate school um, up until this morning. <laughs> so I, I constantly draw, I'm constantly writing, and I pull that imagery um, and sort of compose these images uh, onto the canvas. Um, so that's, that's pretty much my process. Um, they tend to look very aggressive. They tend to look um, not thought out, uh, but they are strictly planned. Um, I'm obsessive about it, and I have journals and notebooks sort of compiling all of my aesthetics and the things that I want to say um, and the things that I'm feeling. And I think that's, that's super important for my work anyway. Um, it's all emotion-based, uh, dealing, uh, dealing with past issues, dealing with uh, troubled relationships. Um, and to get that paint onto the canvas, to work that large, to be so emotional, aggressive in the process, I find to be very cathartic. Um, so yeah, that's my work. So let me um, let me pick up the iPad here and take you on a quick little tour. I hope I don't drop this. <laughs> so. This is uh, a work in progress right now. Quite a large painting. Um, and then you can see, I'm not sure if you can tell on this screen, but it's very textured, heavily textured, very aggressive. Especially up in So that's that, uh, my work, small work table over here. It's very haphazard <laughs> when I'm working. <laughs> paint, paint everywhere. And then 
uh, just a little planning board where I have notes and whatnot. And then it's a pretty long studio, so I can really back up if I want and open up the doors and actually walk all the way outside. So I have quite a bit of space around here. And I have a lot of space to work, to be aggressive and to be, and not have to worry about messing things up or being careful with anything. So, all right, that's my little, my little virtual tour. Oh, well, cool. thank you. Yeah. Thank it's, you. it's wonderful to see the texture uh, in your work and uh, such an expression of feeling through the gestural brush strokes and, and the staccato way that you paint, which is so much a part of your work. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. I'm curious to know uh, how uh, this pandemic that has unfortunately touched all of our lives and is changing the way we live uh, influenced uh, the way that you paint or your schedule. Um, I know that artists, of course, uh, work in isolation. That's the nature of um, of the beast, as we say, but um, this is extreme isolation. And uh, I'm curious to know how each of you have either changed habits or are doing something differently because most of you are probably not having open studios. And we certainly know that you're not uh, showing your work in art fairs or uh, most galleries are shut down right now. Uh, so, what have you done uh, recently to uh, become more um, social without actually being physically uh, in the space with another person? Uh, Nick? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, my daily schedule, my habits really haven't changed. Um, it's unfortunate that this pandemic has hit us, uh, but I tend to be a naturally introverted person. Right. I'm always working in isolation. I prefer to work alone. Um, so in that respect, it really hasn't, it really hasn't changed. Uh, I'm still in the studio, I'm still working. I tend to be a solitary creature. Um, things that have changed though, I, I have been on social media a lot more mm -hmm. uh, because because yeah, not getting our physical on the walls and you know, people can't experience them, they can't enjoy them or ask questions about them in the presence of them. So I think it's really important, um, just like this, uh, this call that we're doing right now um, and sharing our work and sharing our thoughts um, and showing what we're working on because that just, unfortunately, it can't happen right now. Right. Uh, has has your uh, have you given a great deal of thought or some thought to to this virus and and how uh, uh, an expression of what is being manifested in your work somehow has it changed your work in any way? My work tends to deal um, a lot with the past, so there's no real. Um, commentary on current events or politics, but I will say that it is frustrating in terms of getting the things that you need, um, medications, food, essential daily items like that, and it can be frustrating. And I think mm. that maybe has come across in how I'm applying the paint, maybe, maybe a little more aggressively than usual. Um, <laughs> work to my advantage <laughs> so yeah. yeah i understand and 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 certainly uh oftentimes it takes um a distance from the uh current uh, situation before 
you actually begin to manifest it in the work because you sort of sit with it for a while. And as you reflect on your life at some point in the future, uh, it may uh, manifest itself somehow through your work, even more yeah. so than it is now. Yeah, absolutely. I believe that, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for inviting us in. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. All right. So um, going back to what Angela was just saying, um, I know, Katya, you mentioned that you've been sort of absorbing what's happening and interpreting it into your work as well. Um, Belle, have you given thought to this into taking this and making it any part of your work? Have you felt your work change or shift um, because of the pandemic? Or how has it how has it affected your your painting? It really doesn't affect me at all. I'm a very positive person and I'm very disciplined, and um, I'm very fortunate to be able to work with a company, a multinational company that allows us to work from home. My biggest challenge really is how do I reinvent myself even more? take this opportunity because I'm confined. Now I need more focus. How do I take this to the next level? I think that's where I evolve fast. And you've seen in my work before, it's like just gold, black, minimal. But now I want to go out. I want to see the sun, I guess. I want to be out with my friends and have happy cocktail hours again, not just Zoom mm -hmm. hours. So I think you can reflect that because now I'm clamoring for bright, and in addition to that, more materials. My biggest challenge actually is I'm low with inventory level. I don't have enough canvas, enough ink, enough paste. I have, I'm trying to be creative. So I think that brings new colors. They mentioned what they can out of this for the next two months. Wow. Do you, um, by any chance, um, uh, live in a community, whether virtually or in real time, uh, a community of artists whereby perhaps you could share materials um, and I think that that might be an interesting way of addressing lack of materials. That's a great um, comment. So through Agora I've met a really great artist. Um, I can name them here. We are constantly communicating. I get tips from them in terms of what materials, even shipping, delivery, mm -hmm. um, things but for me getting really to the social media just like nick said connecting with them i haven't met them in person yet and we don't have a regular zoom cocktail hour meeting yet but that would be a good one to talk about <laughs> yeah that's a great great way to keep in touch with other artists yeah thank you so much for inviting us in thank you yeah this was this was great. Thank, thank you all. Um, like we said, I think, and as we've all said, it's so important to stay connected during this time. And um, and this is a great way to get a glimpse that we don't normally get to see into your studios where all the magic happens. So that's very exciting. Um, I think... We'll probably wrap it up. Does anyone else have any questions or comments or um, if you want to add something? Add I just love their so I just thought I would say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you all. Um, Angela, anything else? Anything no, um, I, I just uh, hope that everyone stays safe and um, uh, we'll get through this, of course. Uh, we have to respect our, our distancing. And um, I would just hope that, um, you know, as artists, we kind of dig deep and dig in and try to figure out what it is that we want to say in our work that will connect and impact um, other people um, and usually the common denominator is some emotion some feeling that we can all connect to and share and uh, I'm, I hope that we can all do that uh, and share those feelings as you continue to work uh, to reach out even more 
than ever because now we are truly in in a stage and phase of of uh, extreme isolation with regard to uh, not being able to uh, be near each other physically. So we have to do it and think of it, uh, think of doing that in other ways. Uh, I think we're all very creative, very innovative, and that's part of our nature uh, is to be in touch and to love one another. So I hope that uh, we all keep in, it, this in mind as we, as we move forward.